you're new here, make sure to like, subscribe, and follow for more content. I got you covered when it comes to anything to multiplayer games, single player games. It doesn't matter. If it's about video games, we're probably going to talk about it over here. So if there's something you're interested in, make sure you're following along. But either case, today we're going to be talking about the top 10 video games that you've got to play at least once in your life. I mean, for some of these are newer games, some of them are older games. Um, but either way, these are very, very fun games. Um, now, I will say GTA is not included in this list simply because everybody's played GTA. So, it is GTA is a great series, something everybody needs to play, but either case, hold on because we're fixing to jump into this. Assassin's Creed's got to be number 10 on my list. Um, the whole series, I mean, it was just a wonderful experience from the first time I played as Altair in Jerusalem, climbing up these walls and, you know, parkouring on everything, basically, and you know, just the combat mechanics, everything that Assassin's Creed brought to PlayStation 3 was something that I didn't think was possible um, for the time. And I'm so glad they did because it opened up a world to a series that I absolutely love. Now, with that being said, if you're a history buff, Assassin's Creed is definitely something you want to play. It has a lot of historical lore in it. Um, you know, it's got a lot of historical characters, just like in Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood and Revelations. You know, you got Ezio, uh, you play as Ezio Auditore, but, you know, it's got Leonardo da Vinci, Assassin's Creed 3, George Washington, and, you know, other folks who are part of the Re American Revolution there. And, I mean, it's just tons of fun, uh, especially for history buffs. So, if you haven't tried out the Assassin's Creed series, give it a shot. Uh, there's all different kinds, I guess you could say genres. Um, you know, you got everything from, like I said, ancient Jerusalem and, uh, uh Rome. And then you've got France with unity, uh, black flag in the Caribbeans. And you've got Assassin's Creed origins over in Egypt. I'm a huge fan of Egyptology. I mean, it's hard to beat Assassin's Creed origins if you love ancient, uh, Egypt. Uh, and then, you know, if you're a big fan of like, you know, uh, Greek, mythology then you've got odyssey i mean it's huge open world not the best storytelling but it's great and then you've got assassin's creed mirage which kind of goes back to the roots of the stealth assassination uh type gameplay but it's got a decent story to it so number nine on my list has got to be the mafia trilogy i absolutely love history like i said before and the mafia trilogy really scratches that itch that i have as a history buff so you know, the very first game, uh, especially since they redid it, my goodness, it is just loads of fun. Um, great storytelling, decent gameplay. It takes some getting used to. It is an older game. That's just part of it. Mafia 2, same thing. The third Mafia um, is basically redone from the ground up. So it's got new gameplay mechanics and stuff like that. It makes it a little bit more fun, uh, but Mafia 3 is different than... The rest of the mafia trilogy but if you're looking for an open world uh, i say open world it does have limitations but it's pretty much open world but you want a great storytelling game and you're you like the mafia here this uh trilogy right here is definitely for you this is one <laughs> that falls in my number eight category simply because of just childhood memories um this game right here is called Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver, and there is a series out. You've got Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver, Soul Reaver 2, Defiance. You've also got the Blood Omen series. These are older games that, what I'm aware of, you can only play on PlayStation 2. Uh, some of them you can play on PC, but if you can get your hands on them, these are wonderful storytelling games. Now, I will say... It's a lot of puzzles, a lot of clunky gameplay and stuff like that, but the storytelling really draws you to this game. Uh, it's Raziel is the main protagonist, and then you, you know you've got Kane, uh, which is I don't want to spoil anything. That's that's this is what's so hard about this series. I didn't think that this would be that hard, but it is. I really don't want to spoil anything, but. Um, on the other hand, there's a lot of lore that goes into this game, and playing it from Soul River 1 all the way to 2 and Defiance uh, really brings a whole lot. Blood Omen, not necessarily, but uh, either way, Soul River, Soul River 2, Defiance, all those uh, just wonderful, wonderful games that you need to try out, whether you're on PC 
If you got an old PlayStation laying around, you could probably pick up the game somewhere, maybe a flea market or something like that. I have no idea. But either way, if you can find these games, this is definitely something that you need to try out and play, especially if you love storytelling games. This right here is 100% for you. Number seven on my list is a PlayStation exclusive, but um, either way, I'm a PlayStation player and a PC player, but either way, it's Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima is a um, samurai-type ninja open-world RPG game. Um, I'm not big into that type of genre, but this game really <laughs> this game made me fall in love with that type of genre. Um, from the storytelling to the gameplay mechanics, the combat mechanics, everything about this game, the world is absolutely beautiful. Um, even if you're not into that type of genre, I suggest if you're looking for a good single-player game and you got a PlayStation... Give this game a shot. It is loads of fun. I 100% loved every minute of it. I spent close to probably 300 hours in this game. So if you haven't tried it, make sure to pick it up because it's something that you'll absolutely love. Trust me. Number six on my list is also a PlayStation exclusive, but it's, um, it's one of those games that I kind of felt like that type of genre, the zombie style genre, had just been beat to death. <laughs> I was kind of afraid to try it. Um, heard, I heard a lot of bad stuff and then I heard a lot of good stuff, but finally one day it went on sale and I was like, you know what? I'm going to pick it up. So I did. And I'm so glad that I did. Days Gone is a open world RPG, but at the same time, it has a learning curve and a slow story pickup. So it's going to start out real slow in the beginning and it can kind of be you know, uh, in my opinion, it was kind of boring at the beginning, but as the story picked up and stuff started happening, I really, really fell in love with this game. I fell in love with Deacon St. John, the story that he portrays as far as his past and in the future of, you know, some stuff that went on. I don't want to ruin anything, but either way, this game right here specifically, if you look for a good story, open world zombie game, um, there's t hordes of zombies to fight all different kinds of weapons and stuff. This is a good one. Pick it up if you got a PlayStation. It is a PlayStation exclusive, but try it out. Number five on my list is a game that was introduced to me when I was a teenager by one of my close friends. And I'm so glad that he introduced me to the game because the Elder Scrolls series is an open world RPG. Um, you've got, I've never played Morrowind, but that was his main game that he played. And then uh, he introduced me to Oblivion and I absolutely adored Oblivion. Still love Oblivion to this day. And then, you know, it transfers into Skyrim. Skyrim was it's one of the biggest games out there. Um, but if you haven't went back and played maybe Morrowind, which I'm fixing to do, and you hadn't played Oblivion, which I have, and you hadn't played Skyrim, these are games that you really need to get your hands on, especially if you're into that open world RPG. Make your own choices. You choose everything, and it you know, overlays the outcome of the world. Uh, these are those types of games. You can't go wrong with them. Uh, Xbox, PC, PlayStation, it don't matter. Uh, Elder Scrolls is on all three. So either way, if you're looking for that open world, something you want to sink thousands of hours in, Pick up the Elder Scrolls series. Uh, any one of them. I, I say touch any one of them. It doesn't matter. You ain't got to play them in a specific order. Skyrim's just as good as Oblivion in my opinion. I haven't played Morrowind, so I can't say much on that. But he played it a lot. He tells me it was his favorite. So I got to figure Morrowind <laughs> is a really good one also. So, you know, like I said, if you're into that kind of style, uh, it does have a lot of dragons, magic, uh, stuff like that. I'm not huge into that stuff. But the way the Elder Scrolls has played out... It got me into it. I really enjoyed it. Number four on my list is 100% the Fallout series. Uh, I absolutely fell in love with Fallout. I'll never forget. I drop in Fallout 3. I'm in the vault and all this stuff's going on. I'm not going to ruin anything for anybody, but either way, it was just an amazing experience. It had me on the edge of my seat the entire time. It was something that I just didn't want to quit playing. Um, Fallout was one of the first games that I ever 100% completed. It, it was just, it drew me in. The world, the atmosphere, the karma system, the factions, everything about this game felt good. Now, I will say, if you go back and play Fallout 3, the weapon uh, gameplay is a little clunky, but you'll get used to it, especially if you're looking for a good story. 
Fallout 3's got it. Fallout New Vegas has got it. Fallout 4's got it. Uh, either way, if you're just looking for a good experience, all three of these is 100% got you covered. Now, going on in the Fallout series, New Vegas, when it dropped, everybody went wild. I've heard a few people say they didn't like it, but not a whole lot. I absolutely love Fallout New Vegas. I'm actually playing it right now on PC. But at the same time, it may not exactly be your cup of tea if you're an old Fallout fan, but it's something you've got to try um, from the factions and everything. It's just an amazing experience. Fallout 4. Where do I start? Fallout 4 um, introduced a lot of new stuff. Uh, the world looks a lot better. The New Vegas looks a lot better than... You know, Fallout 3, obviously, it's <laughs> a lot younger uh, than those games. But, um, either case, it introduces a lot of new stuff. Takes a little bit of getting used to, especially with the factions. There's kind of a, this new karma system in a way. Um, but, you know, it, it's still a great experience. I feel like there's a lot of lazy storytelling, but it doesn't take away from the experience as the player in an open-world RPG. So, it's definitely something you need to try. This is Snake. Colonel, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Number three on my list, without a shadow of a doubt, is the Metal Gear Solid series. All of them. Metal Gear Solid 1, Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots, Metal Gear Solid 5, Phantom Pain, Ground Zeroes. It don't matter. If it's got anything to do with Metal Gear Solid, I'm 100% all over it. I 100% love the Metal Gear Solid series um there is specific reasons it's not number one on my list but um in either case um let's let's just kind of dig into this the 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 storytelling in this game uh well these games the storytelling in these games is just immaculate it's 100 percent just one of the best storylines that you could follow in any movie any video game it doesn't matter if you're into storytelling metal gear solid series is should be 100% for you. Uh, it does have learning curves as far as when you go back and play the old games and then jump into the new games and stuff like that. But as a stealth action game, with a, it's just it's mind blowing. There's so many uh, different there's so many different story plots from you know Snake, Naked Snake, and Metal Gear Solid Three, and then some things happen and. He gets the title Big Boss, and then you've got, you know, Solid Snake later on down the road going through his trilogy and, you know, learning about, you know, everything that happens from the beginning to the end. It, it's just, it's an amazing game. It's an amazing experience. I'll never forget the first time I, well, I didn't even play the game first time. I sat and watched uh, my parent play this, and I, it just blew me away. So, uh, either way, we got a Metal Gear Solid 3 remake coming up, so it's definitely something you don't want to miss. But either way, the Metal Gear Solid series, you got to give them a shot. They are one of the best experiences that you can have in the video game world. And just like Big Ball says, kept you waiting, huh? Yeah, I'm not that good of a Western whistler, I guess you could say. Um, but I can say this about the American Frontier. Uh, I absolutely love the history behind the American Frontier. And Red Dead, the whole Red Dead series, really, it's it's not something to be uh, um, pushed away from. It's 100% an amazing, authentic. Um, you could tell that the developers took a lot of time on this game, paid attention to a lot of detail, and it shows in their games. It's not something you want to run through or rush through. About how fast John's riding a horse here. It's about how fast you want to go through the game. It's one of those games. It's just it's a beautiful open world. It's the characters. You fall in love with every single character. And you get to know them. And it, it, there's just a lot that goes into these games. And you can really tell that the developers poured their heart and soul into these games specifically. Especially Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 2, the world is immaculate. The storytelling is immaculate. The side stuff, the world literally reacts to everything that you do. Everything you do has a meaning. In the Red Dead Redemption, you play as John Marston. In Red Dead Redemption 2, you play as Arthur Morgan. Either way, you will fall in love with these characters and the characters around them. The story, I'm telling you, is 100% one of the best stories you will ever play. It's definitely something you need to try if you hadn't. Your behalf.
we got lawmen in three different states after us. They chased us from the west, they chased us over the mountains. We need an extra gun. This place ain't no such thing as civilized. You're the only one of these fools that I trust. Where's our money? Do you have my bag? Always, Dutch. <laughs> Number one on my list. This was really hard between Red Dead 2 and this game, but that's uh, The Witcher. The Witcher series is... I, I just absolutely fell in love with it. Um, first time I played Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, played about an hour, hour and a half, and... Uh, I uninstalled the game. I was just like, eh, this just ain't for me. It feels clunky. And, nah, I just, the world looked good. And, you know, the voice characters and stuff really stood out. But I was like, eh, you know, I just, I don't really, I'm not feeling the gameplay. And I put the game on the shelf. I go uh, to one of my friend's house and he says, did you ever beat Witcher? And uh, I was like, no, man, you know, it just, it ain't for me. He said, you didn't play it, did you? I said, well, I played a little bit of it. He said, did you play at least more than an hour? And I was like, not much. And he's like, go back and play it. At least give it a shot for me. And man, I'm so glad I did. I 100% fell in love with the series from The Witcher 1, 2, 3, all of it. The books, the, the Netflix series, in a way, okay? So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying every one of the Netflix episodes is spot on like they said it was going to be and so on but either way at least season one of the witcher yeah i i just enjoy it it's just the storytelling Geralt. oh uh, the good thing about the game is you kind of shape Geralt's character into your you and Geralt kind of become one you kind of morph your own opinions and your own um uh, morality into one but the more you get to know Geralt as a character the more you play as if you are Geralt and you make the best decisions that you can and the world reacts to everything that you do also just like it did in Red Dead the developer CD Project Red put so much time in these games and you can 100% tell it now with that being said there is some downfalls like I said the gameplay as far as uh combat is very 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 clunky um on all three games uh, not not just the witcher 3 but all three of them it is very clunky and it takes some getting used to but i promise once you get used to it you will 100 percent fall in love with it the story is immaculate Geralt as a character everybody around him you fall in love with and you really grow this connection as you and Geralt within this open world become basically one it's uh it's a huge experience that i think everybody needs to experience at least one there's the side quest does not feel like side quests they feel like stories of their own they took so much time in these games and i'm so glad they did i appreciate it everybody i hope you enjoyed this countdown let me know down below if you have anything to add but that's my top 10 list that you definitely 100 percent need to check out at least once in your life see ya